I was born in the great state of Maine and grew up in a very small town, a textile town there, and luckily had a small library that was uh, given by the famous people I've forgotten that <coughs> it's named the Carnegie Carnegie Funds. They had a little library. And they had actually about two feet of science books there, which I rapidly <laughs> read through. And luckily in talking to the, to the uh, librarian, she mentioned that, oh, you can actually w work in science, you know, do a laboratory and they'll pay you. I, I was absolutely astonished that they would, somebody would pay me for working in a laboratory. And she gave me a book that pointed out all what you could do in that, in fact, do basic science research. You know. So that, that led me immediately, <laughs> no questions asked, into science. Yeah. And then I went to college, and there a, a, very, a good Dr. Quinlan ran the chemistry department, and he immediately spotted me and soon had me teaching with him in the course and running the laboratory and all that stuff. So I was immediately drawn in and taken hold. Yeah. And then on to the University of Chicago for a PhD. Oh, then I, I landed at the Rockefeller, you know, which was then the Me Rockefeller Institute of Medical Research. And it was just becoming a university and students were going to be accepted and they had some new people. That was quite attractive to me. And also the Rockefeller is a place that once, once you get in, you never leave. It's one of a black hole for science because you're, you're, everything's so easy to do and well done there that you, you stay there forever, unfortunately, <laughs> for better or for worse. So I was there, I landed there and so I've been there ever since. Uh, in 1955, I think, actually, for the physiology course. But then we went off and I did a lot of work in California. We oscillated from New York and California for 10, 15 years. Then things changed and I started, we started to come to NBL, to Woods Hole, in the summer and set up. And that was in the late 70s. I don't know the exact <coughs> date, but that was the time that I got involved with the marine botany course, which was something very special. It was during the time it was for five year sections. I think they appointed a leader for five years in these courses. And Jerry Schiff was the leader during that time and I got on. I did the f photosynthesis, of course, and the other people did various components of the algae. The, 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 <coughs> the marine biology course is something that's totally missing now. It was a very good course in that the, everybody had real hands-on experience. Not like working in a laboratory. You actually went out in the morning or the afternoon, collected your species of algae in the ocean around here and brought them back, got, tried to get them going in the laboratory, keep them living, learned all about their life histories. Other professors gave lectures on the life histories of these. Particularly there was the red algae, the most common algae is here are the green ones and the brown ones, but there was <coughs> these famous red algae which have a very complicated life cycle and they were, some of them, they're still not known to this day, I think in detail. And at that time they were still trying to grow them in the laboratory and stuff like that. So the students had real hands-on experience and something unknown and something quite novel. Yeah. It was interesting, especially the students had, like I said, had to do a lot of things and do it themselves in the lab. And one experiment I remember <coughs> we were involved with, tried to, to study the circadian rhythm of some of these algae, they even though could, you can only do photosynthesis during the day, right? So what did they do during the night? Some of them actually turn off the photosynthesis. They have a circadian cycle. So they save the stuff and do other things with the material during the night and then turn things on in the morning. And so we had to study the circadian algae and the uh, rhythms in the algae. And that involved, of course, going into the water at all during the night hours and getting samples right then and measuring them right away. So some of the students were a little unhappy when getting into the water at two in the morning and all that. But it was fun and the other ones were thrilled by it. <laughs> and the experiments turned out very well and I think it act we actually published a paper on that in marine botany or something like that and got that. It was something interesting. So the students learned a lot and did a very hands-on research. Yeah, was when I started at the Rockefeller, I was working with Dr. Granick, who was a, more of a biologist, biochemist, and I was a pure chemist. But slowly he weaned me into biology, and one of the things he did was to aim me into MBL physiology course immediately so I could learn, learn a little biology. And that got me going on that. And then I discovered some photochemical reactions of porphyrins, and they're the basis of chlorophyll and all that. So immediately I made the jump into photosynthesis. 
And from then on, I never varied that. That was the subject for me. The photochemistry, photophysics of photosynthesis carried me away. Oh yes, it's, it's certainly here that I got very well aimed on photosynthesis, and particularly on evolution. This Dr. Granick at Rockefeller had, was also a great evolutionist and really taught me quite a bit about that. But it was in, at MBL that I really saw the thought of evolution in practice, how scientists studied it, how they understood it, what was going on, and that really has aimed a lot of my own research toward that, like the origin of life and things like that. Oh, it's such a pleasant place in the summer that you can talk with such interesting people. You hear very good lectures, and you can discuss with many people interesting things that people in general are interested in, scientists, so we're very happy here. Yeah.